Hi guys. This is an impromptu video of an idea I had yesterday. So I'm going to see if I can get it to work. So my idea is to do a watercolor background and then take it over the foil quill and see if I can get the foil quill to stick to it. So I am using regular cheapy Strathmore watercolor paper. Nothing special here. Um, and I got these new brushes from Joann's. I thought they were super cute. Look, they look like little unicorn horns for the handles. And I think it was $8.99 for three and I used my 60% uh, off coupon. So I'm just using the widest of the brushes. I have some water off to the side here and I am going to pre-wet this down. I probably should have maybe taped it down so that we don't have any um, warping, but that's okay. And I'm just going to, I'm using the smooth side, by the way, not the most textured side again, because the idea is to try to foil quill over this. Notice how I am not doing anything um, special with the water, just kind of laying it down, crisscross, nothing super special here. And I guess we could go all the way to the edges. All right, and I'm going to be using the new Arteza gouache paints that they sent me. I want to see how they react and, you know, see if they spread around like watercolor. I did do a video, a video previously with the watercolors doing a galaxy background. So let's see how it works out. So the first color I'm going to do, I have my little swatch book here. And the first color I'm going to do is this golden yellow, just a tiny bit of this in some areas. And this is called Bumblebee Yellow. And I'm just going to put that down in just a couple of spots. We don't want a whole bunch of this yellow. Just very little peaks, peekaboos of it. paint is really creamy. It spreads very nicely. Okay, that's all we're going to do with that. Just have a little jar of water I'm just rinsing my brush off with. Okay, then I want to go in with some Prussian blue, which is a darker blue. I'm going to kind of start filling this in. And I think I'm going to add the next color as well. Actually, let's put all our dark colors down. Uh, that Prussian blue was number one six A one sixteen. The yellow was A one seventy. Uh, violet is A one eighty five, and this is a really dark purple. And then finally, going to top it off with some black, which is A one seventy one, also known as noir. And I'm putting all of it down because it doesn't matter if these darker colors mixed. We we want it to mix. And I may not even have enough paint down. We might have to go in and add some more, but let's wait and see. So I have my brush slightly damp. And let's just go in and have some fun making a mess here. I'm going to add some more water to this. There we go. That black is taking over. I see a little bit of blue and purple trying to come through. Uh, really nice coverage, though. I will say that. I mean, if you want super black, there it is. I do see some of the blue peeking through. I know it may not be coming through on the camera for you guys. I think we're going to be able to layer some of these colors so we can go back in and add some more of that on there. I am painting this on my um, tonic mat. It just makes for easy cleanup. Normally I would have like a piece of paper or something under here, but the tonic mat makes it super easy. 
This paint is very creamy. And look at that full coverage. I'm really impressed with it. Definitely not like a watercolor paint. It is a mixture between like a watercolor and an acrylic. Okay, so I'm going to add some more water and see if we can get this to move around some. And then I can see as it's drying back that the purple is coming through. The um, blue is coming through. I'm trying to go in soften these edges and water it down some we don't want those to be big splotches of yellow Just adding lots and lots of water here. Try to soften those edges up a little bit. Maybe because my brush is just too flat of a brush too. Alright, I'm going to take the heat gun to this for a minute, see if we can dry some of this up. You can definitely see that this is drying with a chalk-like opaque finish, very similar to um, acrylic paints. Very cool. I am going to do a little bit something different here. I'm going to take some of this uh, violet and I'm just going to put it on the craft mat and water it down. Get kind of a wash a wash out of the gouache and see if I can layer some of that color in here because I do see in the areas where it's dried back like back here in the corner that those other colors are starting to peek through I'm going to do the same thing with the Prussian blue and actually interested to see if we can pick up some of this yellow and see how it will layer. areas 
that it's not dry, it's just picking up the color underneath. So we might have to wait for that to dry a little more. Okay, I'm going to take the heat tool to it again. Okay, that looks pretty cool actually, and the paper towel gave it some texture. I want to add a little bit of pink to this. Let's see if I can find it. I'm going to throw on some of this. A115 is called Rose. are very similar to the colors I used on the watercolor uh, galaxy background. My water is extremely dirty and contaminated. It's kind of neat where the paper towel picked up the colors. a little bit of this directly on here. We'll see how that dries. you guys don't see anything but a black blob of a mess but I think as it dries you'll be able to see those colors kind of poke through Can you guys see as it's drying, the colors are coming through. You can see that rose, that pink sitting on top. There's a little bit of purple in the background here. There's some blue in the middle. I know it probably looks really dark and you guys can't see a whole bunch of that. But we're going to make it look more galaxy-like here in a second. Let me just wipe my table down. Probably time for me to throw my towels in the wash too. Microfiber towels are great. I go through. I um, used to go through a lot of baby wipes and a lot of paper towels. I still use quite a bit of paper towels, but the microfiber towels soak everything up. You can throw them in the wash. They don't um, stain. The towels themselves stain, but um, they don't leave any kind of little fuzzies or debris or anything like that around. All right, so I think I want to add some stars, you know, some splattering to this background. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is try to lift some of this paint. So I have a distress sprayer. It's just got water in it. That's what I just used to clean the table down. And I'm going to gently pull and get these big spots. So we're going to see how that goes. We're going to give that a second. And while we're waiting for that, I think I'm going to pull some metallic paints out because I think we can put some of those on there and it'll make it look cool. Some splatter. town lift and see if we if it lifts the paint up like it does with watercolors um a little bit it's not like true white you get a little bit of lift on the colors there i think because i have so much saturation that's why you're not seeing that lift as as much but that's okay have some of the pearl paints out so let's do some pearl white and I'm actually going to put a little dab on the stamping block here and a little bit of silver I'm gonna put on the other end I'm also going to use some pearl aqua blue, which I'm going to just put on the mat for now. And spray this down. is still pretty thick consistency normally when I do this um, it gets really wet and loose and this is really thick I mean that's a really nice consistency oh that is cool all right I think that's too much oh, I wish I had another piece of paper to put that on this is what happens when you only do one project all right, now we're going to do the silver, same kind of thing. Spray that down. Yeah, this paint definitely has a binder in it to make it more thicker in consistency and creamier. Splatter everywhere. We might have too much splatter. You never have too much splatter, right? Just wipe my block off put that away and then what I want to do with this pearl paint up here and I'm just going to use this brush I've already been using for the splatter is again just kind of go into some of these areas I'm going to water it down some more I really want that to be just a hint of that pearlescent paint coming through and I'll cut, I'll probably cut this down and and do like four card bases out of this. I'm trying to make space clouds. What are they called? Nebulas? I don't know. Just putting it in random spots. really pretty as I, I and I'll show you guys as I add more colors you you kind of see the other colors pop through like I can see more of the purple the yellow the blue that was down before the darker blue the, the red or the pink I should say I 
think that looks pretty cool like that. Like, I don't even know if I want to run it through the foil quill now. Okay, let me dry this some more. Okay, I know it looks like a hot mess, but I think it looks like a galaxy hot mess. It looks pretty cool. Try not to look at it in such a big perspective because if we cut it down, you're going to have small sections, so you're not going to see as much. All right, I am going to pause the video. I'm going to run this over to the foil quill machine. I did pick up a full size of foil today from Joann's and shh, don't tell anybody, but they let me use a coupon. Um, so this is the silver heat activated foil. Um, this is the full size sheet instead of the smaller sheets because I wanted to do a larger project and I wanted to see how much foil was in here. So I'm going to go work up a design on my silhouette and run it through the foil quill. I don't know that I really need to show you guys that part. I'll try to tell you the design, but basically what you do is you pick a design on your electronic die cutting machine. I use the Silhouette 2, and then you feed this through like you're going to print on it, but you put your foil quill into the machine instead of a pen, and this essentially writes through the foil by heating the foil up and then transferring the design onto your art surface. So hopefully I don't mess this up um, and I want to do like a, I want to I was thinking about doing like these constellation backgrounds um, and putting some some words on there like reach for the stars or something like that but I'm gonna see if I can do a full sheet and do four panels like break it up into four panels so I will be back once I figure that out and cross your fingers because I have not done this before and I hope I don't ruin my whole background here. Okay, I'll be back, guys. Okay, guys, so the foil quill is warming up and I'm going to stick this on. I have a Cricut mat because it seems to be a little easier. The silhouette mats are kind of flimsy. And I'm just going to stretch this foil all the way across and tape it down and we're gonna go from there now this is where it comes in handy to have a foil quill because I wouldn't be able to do this with the mink because I wouldn't be able to print this design so 
I thought, let me give this a little fair share. Oh, it's like the perfect width, too. Um, you know, I didn't want to be negative Nancy and say the foil quill was a waste of my money. So it's sticking down on the mat at the bottom there. And then I'm going to put some washi tape at the top. And I know that's probably going to be a mess for me to clean up later. But at this point, it's already stuck. So who cares? That's going to that's gonna lift. That's going to come off. You really want your foil to be... Um, pretty tight. Taut, I guess is the word. Okay. Wish me luck. I'll be back. Okay, guys. So here the foil quill is doing its thing. I'm using the medium tip. I will show you the designs. So I tried as best as I could to fill it in. I purchased these designs from the Silhouette store. So the one has the constellations in the background and then hopefully on top it layers reach for the stars. Love you more than all the stars. And I tried to fill the whole page so we'll have to wait and see how it comes out and reveal it. So here we go. I mean, it looks like it's working. So, we'll let this go for a few minutes, and I'll be back with the final reveal. Okay, guys. I turned that light off so there wasn't as much of a glare. Are we ready for the reveal? Now, I will notice up here I had put two designs, but I didn't layer it. So, all it did was the constellation background, which is fine by me. I'm too anxious. So, let's rip up this washi tape. And just like I suspected, that foil stuck to my mat, but that's okay. We'll survive. I'll figure out a way to get it off of there. And you guys know I normally do save my foil and try to reuse it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that with this. Ooh, I'm going to undo this from the top here. All right. I'm just going to be like a kid at Christmas and rip it all off. My washi tape stuck to the mat. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. All right, so like I said, I need to work on my fill patterns. I thought I had a pretty good understanding of it, but clearly I do not. What you guys didn't see is I was messing around with it for at least a good half an hour. Um, let's cut this down and see what it looks like. Get the big old trimmer out.
All right, so I know these are odd sizes. I was just trying to eyeball them. All right, but I think they came out pretty cool for my first time. Whoops, here we go. Trying the foil quill on colored backgrounds. The foil really filled in nice. Now up here is where I had the washi tape again. No big deal. I still think it looks cute. And then this one, love you more than the stars is what it says on both those. And again, these are designs on the Silhouette Studio. I searched stars and I searched constellations and these are what came up. And I think they were 99 cents. Um, so once I figure out the fill pattern, came out pretty cool. I'm really, really impressed. These are going to make cool backgrounds. And then reach for the stars. Now here where it's yellow, it's a little hard to see. For this one, I might take like a foil or like a um, uh, opaque pen and kind of color it in like maybe a silver pen or something. But again, still kind of cool. And then this one's just a constellation background, and I'll just cut this down and use it in the in the back. So there we go, guys. I know this was a lengthy video. There was a lot involved with it. You guys know I don't do a whole bunch of mixed media, but again, I use the Arteza gouache color paints, which were very opaque and very easy to use. I will link them down below for you guys. Um, it would probably work the same way with the watercolors. The reason I wanted the gouache was, again, so that it wasn't so transparent. I mean, this really does look like a galaxy. It is pretty stinking cool. I'm very impressed with it. And then I used the foil quill and my Silhouette Cameo too, and just downloaded some designs. But I don't know. What do you guys think? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything or what I used and how I did it, post it down below. Once again, I always appreciate you guys' feedback on everything. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep on stamping. Bye-bye.